What's going on, folks? Welcome to the first day to 100K in one year business course. This is going to be different from the last one. Much, much different. It's not going to be five days a week. Uh, learn from that. Most people can't keep up. There are still people who are trying to finish up 30 days to 2,500. So this is going to be more focused and not so much a slower pace, but I'm going to give the information at a more digestible rate, if that makes sense. So with that, let's jump into it. One of the things that I'm going to teach you is how to think big. But before we get into that, you should have a business for this course. You have some hustle and you should be ready to work your ass off. There will be people coming in. And you'll see this that who should start with 30 days to 2500. And that's why I made it inclusive of this course, because I have a feeling what's going to happen if I start people off who will think I'm, I'm big. I'm bad. I can do this. I can make this happen, Glendon. And they get in and become overwhelmed. And it's like, ooh, I think I need to start somewhere else. And this is the starting place. It's a great course. It works well. This is to enhance what you're doing and to take it to another level. And this is just really the introduction. This is your season to push. Last month was typically a slow month for me because I had it in my head because as I teach these courses, as I continue to push and to build my brand, I learn stuff. This is a never ending thing. There is no such thing as, oh, I'm ready. I'm there. I'm done. No, it's always learning. And last month was pretty good, which is typically a slow month right after Christmas. It was pretty good. It was shockingly good. And the reason that happened is I pushed myself. I've never done 27. Altogether, it was like it was 30, including other stuff, it was 30 webinars in about six weeks. I've never done that before, but the results were spectacular. It was easy to keep up with stuff. It was, you know, it was it was a grind. It was a grind. There was a lot of days, and then my mom died and I had to go to the funeral and other stuff. But I learned that if I really push. Even though it's so-called slow, because once again, it's the summer and it's supposedly slow. If you really push, you can make just as much money in the summer as, you know, people go, it's fourth quarter, it's Christmas, it's all that money out there. I want you to be chilling at Christmas if you can. If your business dictates you have to work, you have to work. But if you can chill or be somewhere with your family at Christmas, I highly recommend it. Because my daughter has an Etsy store and we already talked about it. She's shutting that bad boy down probably two weeks before well yeah two weeks before christmas because that last week i've been there it's december 23rd oh i'll buy this can you get it here on the 24th and there's it's just madness so essentially what i learned and i always knew this and i pushed but i pushed myself even harder and you will be doing the same thing you will be pushing you will be pushing you will be pushing the first thing you need to do is to believe you can do this that's the first thing. That's why I named the group the Hustlers Mindset Project, because mindset that that is critical. That is crucial to you being successful in anything that you do. As we get through this, we're going to have to because you're growing your business, you're going to have to delegate. Even if you're one person business, there's something that you can automate in your business. I let some domain names go and some other stuff I got rid of because they weren't really doing anything. I was spending more time maintaining that stuff than they were actually producing any revenue. And I'm streamlining the course. The course I'm streamlining what I do. I got rid of a lot of email addresses. Automate and make what can be simple in your business super simple. And if it's complicated, try to make it as simple as possible. You do that, you free up your mind and you free up your time. Be bold. This is no time for, well, if you want to make a million dollars, pull out a sheet of paper right now and write one million dollars on it and stick it in your wallet. Put that out there. 
Put that in your mind. Put that in your physical DNA. Put that out there. And this is another thing that you're, that's going to happen as you grow. You have to learn how to be selfish with your time. You're going to have to learn how to say no. Uh, there's people who've been after me for podcasts and stuff. Not bad people, not bad shows, but frequently they come at me when I could be doing this, which is well worth my time versus those other things. This I don't subscribe to this be everywhere, doing everything on all platforms things. That is not the business model for me. It may work for other people. I don't like it. Don't spread yourself too thin. And that's where, you know, being selfish, being able to say no, because this just I heard this podcast and they were talking about it. Guys built this multi-million dollar business and he came home and told his mother, he's like, Ma, I made one hundred and fifty thousand dollars this month. And she said, doing that thing you do. He said, yeah. When are you going to get a real job? I am not kidding you. This this mindset of it is infuriating. I make more money than anyone in my family. And my own brother called me a failure. Because I don't have a job. Because I don't do the things he does. This is what you have in store for you. Unless you hit it mega big. You know, you could be doing okay. That is not enough for people. Unless you hit it mega big. So that's another reason that you're going to, to be selfish with your time. But when you're dealing with people who are not in your corner, who are not there to support you, because this is a lot starting any business, then maintaining it, then pushing it, then grooming it, then making it better. This is a heavy, heavy, heavy commitment. And you cannot have those people who are going, no, you can't do that. It's impossible. Wait a minute. You trying to do that? <laughs> you can't have those people in your life. If they're family, tune them out, minimize your contact with them until you get your stuff rolling where their negative energy cannot impart and separate your energy on the things that you're doing. Because it is very, very important that you realize the things that you're doing are valuable, that you're starting a business. You're going to leave a legacy for your kids. You're going to do stuff. You're going to make stuff, make something out of yourself. And to people who are used to regular, I go to work at 8 p.m., I get off at 5, um, they're not going to understand it. Not going to understand it. Which goes to mindset is the most important thing. I was doing a video today. You'll see it tomorrow when I get it processed. About one of my uh, labor pool jobs. I was sitting next to a guy that gave me the blueprint to a successful business. Wrote it down on paper. Showed it to me every day. But because I was thinking like a chump. I couldn't see it. Working with this guy, I could have did what he was doing and gotten myself out of that boarding house and been making buku money. Buku. I'm talking like, excuse me, will you bring that wheelbarrow of hundreds over here? Yeah, we'll take it over there. Thank you. Oh, there's another one. I mean, it was seriously the money this guy was making. But I was so stuck in the wrong mindset. My thing was go out here, ride in this truck get this money, go home and do nothing. <laughs> oh man, I look back and I was just shudder at how naive and green I was. If I can get you to think like a business owner, if I can get you to think of value versus time for money, this course will be a stunning success because there are people out there right now who are no smarter than you. I have no more resources than you making 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70,000 a month in their businesses. And let's just really talk about this because you're in the G verse. There's some things that I can tell you at this point that will not distract. If you start this business and let's just talk about this business has an expiration date. It's not going to be there forever and forever. 
you start this business and it lasts five years and this business is making let's pull a number out the air 78,000 per month net profit which is close to a mil a year you pay your taxes at least you're like 600 close to 700,000 this only lasts for five years yeah four I said four I believe last, no five five years that is 3.5 million dollars in spendable cash that you get in five years if you're in the G-verse, what you're going to do is you're going to save half of that. So in five years, you're going to have one point five million or maybe more, because with numbers that large, you might be saving 70 percent. You may do what I want to do. <clears throat> Buy a building that has tenants in it and get that residual monthly income. What I'm saying is to be more clear and direct is even if your business only lasts five years and you pull that money out and you t funnel it into something else, that business can set you up for life. It doesn't have to last forever and ever. It doesn't. You can be what's called a serial entrepreneur. You go ahead. And this is thinking like a business owner. You go ahead and you get that building, right? You got, say, two million. The building's worth two million. You pay cash and you're getting um 25 30,000 a month in rent pay your taxes yeah you know you get 30 maybe 30 to 50,000 depending upon the building you pay your taxes so you got like 225 250 a year spendable cash let's just say 200,000 spendable cash you still got the building you still have that equity that building is growing up in value oh here's an opportunity but you need a million dollars no problem. You go to the bank, show your strong cash flow, show the fact that you've got five, six hundred thousand cash in the bank already. Get yourself a million dollar loan. Buy that other business outright. It's churning cash. It's already paid for because it's paid for. And now this other building that you leverage that cash out of. It has the income to pay the bank note. You have another business that you own that's paying you more cash. So now your spendable income per year has gone up to three hundred and fifty thousand. That is thinking like a business owner. Some businesses are going to be around for a very long time. Other businesses will not. There's businesses that I grew up with. It was this company I love to go to. It was called Zare, Z-A-Y-R-E, when I was a kid. It doesn't exist in Alabama anymore. Uh, there was another place, Bargain Town. It's gone. Pazitz, Loveman. But... Lisa Pazitz went to Vestavia High School. Uh, she's still a millionaire. That business doesn't exist anymore, but she's still a trust fund baby. When you're successful, it leaves residue. And then often the residue is cash and influence. So don't worry about if what you're doing may peter out in five or six years. Like the guy, Peter Spill, who was on 60 Minutes, not Peter Spill, uh, the other one that filed that pay, uh, the one that I can't think of his name right now, but it'll come to me. He was the guy that founded PayPal and he owns uh, Tulsa and he sends up rocket ships. He took his money, which was one hundred and eighty three million dollars on one hundred and eighty three million dollars. And took it enlisted, bet big on cars and uh, rockets and almost went bankrupt. He was running on fumes. Now he's a billionaire. Because he's all like a business owner. He took all that money. He didn't go become a yacht welding, which he could have easily done. $183 million is a mind-blowing sum of money. Properly $100 million in the right fund, your grandkids, 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 grandkids don't have to work. But he risked it. He risked a lot. But he always thought as a creator, as a business owner, as building. That mindset is so important before you even think about doing this. You really, really have to sit up and say, yes, I'm going to do this. Yes, I'm going to make this happen. Yes, this is my business. I can do it. First task, because this will be just like 30 days to 2,500, but the modules be weekly. It won't be a bunch of tasks. It'll be like a certain task for the week. 
You're going to develop your brand, whatever that is. You're going to answer these two questions. Who are you and why do you why you sell it? Very important questions. You have to know. Someone put in the Facebook group not too long ago. Why do you sell what you sell? I was like, I love what I do and I give incredible value to people. I didn't have to think about it. That's it. That's why I sell what I do. It's, the money is great. But when you up your game, you do not do things for money. You do things for freedom. You do things for value. You know, my brand is I'm that blunt guy on YouTube that will give you great business advice and life advice and credit advice. But that's who I am and that's why I do it. And when you know these things and you understand them, it makes you very powerful and it makes your sales pitch much better. So task number one, you're going to develop your brand whatever that may be for whatever business you have. Now, this is the Jedi mind trick. The goal is 100K in one year, right? We're going to crank it up. You're going to really be shooting for 200, and we'll tell you why. When I was in sales, my mentor would always up my numbers. Oh, your number's 150? He put 180. Oh, your number's 200? He put 250. I was like, man. And I'm sitting there, right, with the with the wrong mindset going, could you lower my numbers? And he was like, no. And what was happening was since he raised my numbers, I consistently hit the original plan. It was weird because you, you're not thinking like, OK, if you think, OK, I got to make 100 grand, I got to sell 100 grand. You're going to limit yourself. But if it's like 200 grand. The 100 grand doesn't seem so daunting. So if you get 120, you're 20% above plan. <laughs> you're above the cane and you've achieved your goal. Always look high on the tree. Stop making small goals. One of my goals from publishing was to create a life of intended design and to be free from the normal constraints of a working life. Accomplished. The only issue I have, unless... I have other people who, because this this is really a small world. The number of people who have this lifestyle is very, very small. The number of people who make money exclusively from the internet is very small. You may know thousands, there may be conventions, but we live in a world of 7 billion. In this country of 330 million, I would not be surprised if all of the internet entrepreneurs that were making 50,000 a year or more would only fill up a stadium, and I'm not talking about people getting kicked out. I'm talking about comfortably would fit in one of the larger football stadiums in the country. That's how small this is. That's how small it is. That's why you can be with your friends and not know one person who's doing this. You might know 100 people and not one person's doing it because there's not that many. What does that mean? The opportunity is incredible. It is. I'll share with you why I stopped doing YouTube hate videos and calling people out. I was competing with people that really couldn't compete with me. I was actually lowering myself. I was actually shooting myself in the foot and doing stupid human tricks. And one day I realized that you're paying more attention to people who don't like you than the spreading love copiously on the people who love you. Your priorities are all out of whack, dude. And I made the switch. I created my own social media policy. Stopped doing it. My business boomed. Focus, focus, focus. Focus on competing with yourself. All of that other stuff out there, it doesn't matter. It, it really doesn't, because when you compete with yourself, you make yourself a, a little bit better each day. You get more valuable. Set those goals high, because I never wrote a book. And for me to hit this lifestyle, which I've had pretty much the first 14 months, I wasn't making, you know, life. Well, yeah, it was life changing. I was making money to support myself, pay my bills, eat, whatever, and sit around and write. That is, you can do this too. You can create it because say say you have a business that sells physical goods. You hire somebody and you pay them right and they run it while you're off playing golf or fucking your wife. That's what you do. I'm going to teach you how to delegate. Teach you how to let that I am the only one who can do this. It's a lie. That's another stupid human trick we tell ourselves. That no one can do it. 
I'm sorry. There are people who can do it just like you. There are people who actually you can hire who would probably do it better than you. Think like a business owner. Don't think like an employee. Don't think like a selfish troll. Think like a business owner. It's a big difference. Open your mind to make it more money. This is critical. Many people have mental income thresholds. Uh, I'm only worth about 50. Oh, I'm only worth about this. Most people feel that they're worth 50 and below. And that's why most people make 50 and below. 80% of the people in this country do not make six figures. Only 15.8% of the people make in this country make over six figures. Hand, well, you know, out of uh, 330 million, that's a lot of people. But when you crank it up to 150, we're like 5%. 5, 6% at 150. So 95% of this country makes less than 150,000. Here in this business, and let's be real clear, this isn't gross sales. This is your net goal. Yeah, I know. I just added a degree of difficulty to it. This is net. This is the stuff you put in your pocket. Oh, you know, you have to pay taxes on this part. But that's what you're looking because if we're just going to do 100000 you can go out with a credit card, buy a bunch of retail arbitrage stuff, buy $10,000 worth of stuff, and make it, you know, enough profit to pay your interest and stuff. And at the end of the year, you sold $120,000 worth of stuff and you may have made 5000 profit. That's not exciting to me. Now, you can get a lot of points that way. That's the way you can get a lot of points on certain cards. I thought about it. Trust me, I did. But uh, from a business standpoint, it doesn't make any sense. It really doesn't. Another thing you're going to do, you're going to create a wealth diary. This is going back to thinking high on the tree. Many people will talk themselves out of getting a Porsche or Ferrari if they can afford it because they'll say, I'm not one of those kind of people. People that drive Porsche, it, they're driving it because they're trying to make up for some, where, some other area that they're lacking. Before I got the X5, I was going to get a Porsche and I'm not lacking down there. A Porsche is a badass vehicle. It is. A Ferrari is a badass vehicle. If you've ever been in one and driven one and feel the rumble on your buttocks as you go down the street, it's awesome. If you want one, put it in your wealth diary. If you want to be able to pay for your kid's education, put it in your wealth diary. If you want to retire with X amount of dollars, put it in your wealth diary. Start really pulling this stuff out of your head and just thinking, you know, this, this is about money, where you want to be, how you want to get there. Just write about it. You want a Porsche? Put it in there. It's like, I want a Porsche 911. Put it in there. Then, after you put it in there, you go to the dealership and you drive one. Just walk in there and say, look, you know, thinking about buying a car in the next year or so. And I'm doing a lot of research, and I know these are pretty expensive. I just a lot test drive one. You've told the person you're not buying that day. You're looking out. They're going to let you drive that sucker. Have fun. Enjoy it. Put this in your wealth diary. You want to go to, uh, you want to take the fam to Italy for, you know, Christmas. Put it in the wealth diary. Start thinking like that because you can do it. You can do it. In this diary, every day, three to five minutes, you write about it. You write about your day. You write about your success. This is all about your business. You know, if you're going to buy personal stuff, get a personal diary. This is, you know, your wealth, business, money diary. Because what is measured is appreciated. Put in your successes. Put in your failures. And when you look back, you'll be like, oh, damn. That was horrible. But look, 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 look. Oh, man, that was the joke. It just gives you incredible energy. Once again, set a high personal goal. It should make you smile. If the goals that you're setting for yourself don't make you tremble or scare you a little bit, they're too low. You should be bothered. You should feel like, woo. Like that first time you got on the roller coaster and it went down that in steep, uh, that deep uh, dip and your stomach went bloop, bloop, bloop. You should be feeling some kind of way when you set your goal. If it's just like, yeah, that's something I can accomplish in a year. And this, and to me, those are kind of like daily tasks or yearly tasks. I mean, the goal, the big stuff, you know, big, 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 big. Think about it. Now, this is another task. 
and this is something that I'm really, really big on. Today, plan your next vacation three to six months from now. You're taking a vacation three to six months from now because you're going to work your ass off in this course and you're going to need it. Plan it now. Vacation could be 500 bucks. Get in the car, go to the beach, whatever. Doesn't have to be overly expensive, but plan a room. You don't have to pay for it, but plan it. Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Put it on the calendar when you want to go. Start planning your life. Just start planning it and building on it. Because this is part of the life plan. You're not just going to do this to make money. You're going to do this to make your life better. You're not getting this money just like, woo, look at me. I got a lot of money. Got a gold chain. Got 99 prop. No, you're not doing that. You're doing this to build a rich, vibrant, incredible life for yourself and your family. That's why you're doing this. And this includes vacations. This includes taking time off. This includes a life plan. Something for you to think about. Okay. So. We will go to the questions. Uh, Bam. <laughs> I forgot where they were. Yep. I love that. Elon Musk. Yes. I watched it on 60 Minutes. I'm very impressed with him. And Dave Ramsey's the man. Dave is the dude. So any questions about whatever I've gone over? Uh, there's going to be a session tomorrow because, you know, we're going to just kind of re just go over some things. Because if you take in because I had a guy who did close to 60,000 off of the information from 30 days to 2,500. He had a business. He was doing well already. It just took those concepts and made it better. So this is going to be a little wilder. <laughs> so brace yourself. So if there's no questions, uh, just uh, we get busy. Get busy on these goals. Get busy on. Go through this again. Developing your brand. Because uh, last time people said I didn't spend enough time on the slots. <clears throat> so I'm going to do that this time. Develop your brand. Who's your brand? Whether you are, who you're selling to. Develop that. Set a goal of 200000 Create a wealth diary. This is very, very important. This is very, very important. It makes you think about your life more often than you just react to stuff that comes into your life turns you into a thinker and a planner and if you can put thinking with planning and action you create an incredible triad of success in the vacation and you know everyone here is in one hundred thousand dollars in 12 you know 100k to 12 in 12 months so if you didn't get if you catch anything and you could discuss this and put this out in the group uh this should be up late tonight or early in the morning and we're going to get into some heavy, heavy stuff. And also, the credit webinar is only for people in the group. So that'll be Tuesday mornings. And I'm going to do three days. And we'll see how people will do with this. And if that's too much, I'll just crank it back to two. But we'll always be talking about this in the group. And there's some secret stuff I'm working on to bring for this course. That thing's going to be awesome. So with that, there are no more questions. I'll wait a second because somebody usually tries to sneak one in when I'm going up there and I'm hitting that button in the webinar. Okay, well, that's it. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a little bit more entertaining. All right, this is Glendon, and I will see you on the good side.